Okay. Hi, Shane. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing well, thank you. So we've got uh, Shane Gentry here from Sally Said So, uh, a dog training and modification program. Um, mm -hmm. uh, thanks for talking with me today, Shane. And uh, just wanted to talk to you about your business and, and ask you some questions if that's okay. Absolutely. I love it. Okay. All right. Um, so your, your business name is great. How did that come, how'd that come about? I love this question because it's a great story. It's actually, so Sally was my dog. That's her in the logo right here. Mm -hmm. So um, she was a Boston Terrier uh, and she was, she was that uh, sort of that one in a lifetime dog that I hope everybody on this planet that's, that likes dogs. I hope you get the opportunity to have that kind of dog mm -hmm. uh, that just comes into your life and, and leaves an everlasting mark. I mean, we've lost multiple dogs and they all suck when they go and it all hurts, but dude, that one, that one, that one, that one's right there, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but the fun part is when people call up, I still, I, I'm the owner of the company and I still answer all the phones 11 years in. And, um, People call up going, hey, can we speak to Sally? I'm like, you got him. You know? <laughs> this is Sally. <laughs> yeah, this is Sally. <laughs> and you can hear them on the phone going, looking at you. You know they're looking at the phone like this going, what? Right. That doesn't sound like a Sally. That's so exactly, funny. exactly. But that's where okay. the name came from. She was special. And uh, so I, I, when this all came about, uh, I just felt it proper to name it after her. No, she was, she was a big personality. And if she said so, then you kind of knew that was the deal. Pretty much. All right. I love it. Okay. And then um, where are you located? I saw Raleigh on um, one of your pages. And uh, what are the main services you provide to the community? Yeah. So we are located, uh, I started the company 11 years ago in Clayton, North Carolina, which just a little south of Raleigh. Mm -hmm. um, we moved down here about four years ago. We started out in Hubert and then we ended up in Emerald Isle and now we're in Swansboro. So we just kind of did the circuit. Right. You know, we'll be getting back to Emerald Isle before too terribly long. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, originally I moved down here just to run the business from here. And uh, once people heard that I was in town and the calls started coming, so I couldn't say no. So we opened up a branch here. Right. But also, so right now today, we've got trainers here at the Crystal Coast. We're basically covering New Bern to Wilmington. Then we've got uh, trainers in the Triangle. We got trainers in the Triad, which is Greensboro, High Point, Winston Salem area. Mm -hmm. uh, we got trainers in Charlotte. And we got trainers in Asheville, and I've got two markets that I'm looking for trainers in: in Charleston, South Carolina, and Jacksonville, Florida. Wow! So Sally gets around. Yeah, yeah, she. Uh, <laughs> it just keeps growing, so we just keep going. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. And then as far as the services that you provide, obviously you do dog training. Is there anything more specific you want to speak about or is that kind yeah, of? Yeah, of course. Uh, so training and behavior modification. Uh, those two things get mixed up quite often. They're not the same processes. Mm -hmm. They start out the same and then they have to get separate. Things have to be done. And then at back at the end, they all kind of come back again. So mm -hmm. a lot of times people will call and say, you know, their dog's having a behavior problem, but the, the human version is, uh, I can't train him not to be dog aggressive. That's not a training. That's a behavior modification. Mm -hmm. Once the modified, once we've modified the behavior appropriately, then we train the dog. So again, it's together, then it's separate, then it comes back. Right. Um, we have two specialty services. Uh, well, first off, all of our programs are in the home. So it's private in-home instruction. You got a problem at your house. You can't fix it in my house. We got to come to you. That's where the right. problem's at. That's where we're coming to fix it. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, two specialty services though uh, I'd say the third most uh, frequent call we get unfortunately is dog bit my kid we get a lot of that it happens often whether I mean it's a, I don't want to be Donnie Downer here but it, it does happen and uh, so we have a an expecting mother's canine preparation course so what we do is we get the dog ready for the baby before the baby gets here to be proactive in having the dog ready to accept those major changes right. that come through. And trust me, it's going to change you. If you're a first time mom listening to this right now, every single person I've ever had this conversation with says, well, Fluffy was my first baby. <laughs> you wait till baby, baby comes. You'll be like, Fluffy who? I got to feed this thing and walk around with it 24 seven. Right. I had well, Fluffy doesn't know the difference. Right. Fluffy's going to get your attention somehow and it's yeah. not going to be wash your dishes. Right. <laughs> right I had a, a dog before a child and you're right you 
you do really love your dog and you, you know, but the child is not the same. Not the same. <laughs> Exactly. And then the uh, the other service, specialty service that we have is our biggest number one phone call. And that's wrong dog with the wrong family. Okay. People have all the greatest intentions and their heart's in the right place. And sometimes the application is a little off. You know, my dog is 120, 30 something pounds. She sleeps 18 hours a day. That's my kind of dog. Okay? <laughs> If y'all see me jogging down Emerald Isle with my dog, you better get whatever you can fit in your hands and come on. There's something real. There's a dinosaur or something <laughs> real bad coming. Okay. I don't run. So okay. neither does my dog. Right. I hear you. I hear <laughs> she you. She fits my life. You know, she fits my lifestyle. So we have a pre-purchase puppy consultation service or slash adoption. So if, uh, if you're out there and you're thinking about getting a dog, especially right now while everybody's quarantined, lots of people are rescuing dogs, buying dogs, whatever, acquiring dogs, however they go about it. Uh, we sit down in a meeting just like this. Uh, we ask you a half a million questions and we start narrowing down proper breeds that would fit your lifestyle. Once we decide on what that breed is, we help you find it, whether it's through a rescue or breeder. If it's a breeder, I call and ask all the hard questions that the average dog owner might not know to ask. And if it's a rescue, I work with just about every rescue in town. So it's easy, phone call. Hey, what you got, what you got, what you got? And we, we get dogs paired with the proper families hundreds of times a year. Right, I understand. Yeah, that is key. We've done some fostering and I will say it's, it's definitely key as far as just having a dog in your house to visit, you know? There's just yeah. certain dogs you can talk, either, either active lifestyle or behaviors that they have that you can handle or not handle. Some people might not mind a little barking. I'm one right. that you got to yap, 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 or then I'm not, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, oh, yeah. You know, it just depends on our tolerance, right? Um, okay, yeah. and then um, let's see. You've been on the Crystal Coast, you said four years? Yeah, yeah about four years I've been down here. And then um, the most difficult uh, pet behavior I think you touched on. Um, well, the most it, difficult one is the human one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do understand. Look, dogs are easy. Humans make them very complicated. Yeah. Okay. They're not people. They're dogs. We gotta. There's a different set of how we interact with them. I understand. I actually worked in Germany for a couple of years and was very uh, impressed with the way that Germans interacted with their dogs and how different it was than in America. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't name their dog after a person and they didn't dress them up in outfits. You know, they could walk through the train station with no leash and. Mind, you know, mind. Right. I'm pretty impressed. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. If people want to reach you, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, the easiest way is very simple. Sally said so .com. Okay. We just got, uh, we just launched a brand new website. We got tons of features. There's an instant chat. There's a uh, 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 easy communication, fill out stuff comes straight to me. We answer immediately. I literally sit around here all day with this thing stuck to my face. Uh, answering calls and emails. So that's the other thing. When, when you do call or when you do email, you get me now. And, and you know, that might not mean anything to you because you don't know me yet, but you know, it's very few places that you get to call and the owner of the company answers the call. Absolutely. So, I mean, the buck stops here and if something needs to be done, I can make it happen. Right. Okay, great. All right. And then, um, Oh, this is just a, a coronavirus kind of question. Mm -hmm. Do you have televisits happening now or what kind of services are you able to provide currently? So we are currently offering whatever the client is comfortable with. Some people we're meeting in backyards and, you know, plenty of space to be separate. Um, everybody's using uh, common sense and, and protecting themselves. We've got masks, we've got gloves. Uh, we meet uh, and, and most of our sessions are happen happening outside or uh, via whatever service the customer wants. So we're using Zoom, we're using FaceTime, Skype, GoToMeeting. Yeah. Um, but the good news is, you know, even though this is a horrible thing we're all dealing with, obviously, uh, you know, we always try to find something good in, in everything, whether it's good or bad. And the good thing that has come out of this is having been forced to kind of communicate this way nowadays, um, we had to kind of really rush to make an, a, a, an appropriate program that could be done this way and still be effective. Right. Well, it has been received so well. All of our clients, existing, current, coming on new clients, they love it. 
So we're keeping it. This is yeah. a, this is part of our service. So now, uh, in between sessions, the owner can pop on with their trainer for two or three minutes, just like this. You can see me. I can see you, and say, "Hey, it's that." And you can say, "Oh, had this," and I can walk my dog over here, and you know, instead of having to set aside an hour of their time to allow the trainer to come over on outside of scheduled visits, right? Um, our customers are loving it. So it's just part of the pi package. There's no extra fee for it. It's just an added value to the service that we already provide. That's awesome. I am hoping that with all this, you know, the good that comes out of it is a lot of things that haven't been available in a tele kind of way, mm -hmm. um, you know, be it medical services or otherwise, you know, that people realize how easy it is now that we've kind of, like you said, been forced to hurry up and figure it out right. as a teacher. I a have learning to, curve. Yeah, big learning curve. I, I teach preschoolers, so you want to talk about joy with us. Uh, um, thankfully, the parents are there to manage the mics because the first meeting didn't go so well. Let's just go. <laughs> we now have small groups, but anyway. Um, okay, and then the ideal age for a puppy to start receiving training through your company is? Eight weeks old. All right, guys, listen to me. You can't let the cute get you. All right. They're all cute, but it's a dog. It's not a human. When we use the term puppy, our brains biologically are wired to think baby. That's what puppy translates to in English. <laughs> it's baby. Gotcha. And when we apply those human emotions to the non-human, we are inadvertently going to allow, uh, and I say allow, not cause we are going to allow inappropriate behaviors to start from the get go. Okay. So for instance, I think my, and again, I do this for a living and I'm a little bit of a type A maniac kind of guy, like show me what do leave me alone kind of, you know, that's sort of my personality. Mm -hmm. So I had my dog uh, done before she was 16 weeks old. So by four months old, we were sit down, stay, he'll come, desensitized, socialized, go anywhere, do anything. She could see a, a cat, a squirrel, kid on a bicycle, an alien landing, a clown car. It doesn't matter what it is. Everything was just like, yeah, whatever. I'm going where he's going, you know? And so it's absolutely possible. So absolutely proactive, proactive, proactive versus reactive. Remember, your dog doesn't know that the shoe is fun until they have the opportunity to get one and run away with it. You chase them, you turn it into a game. So be proactive. We, our motto is we set dogs up to succeed by not allowing them to fail while we're teaching them the appropriate alternative behaviors. There you go. And, I, and I've just watched a little Caesar Milan and, and things like this where I understand that a lot of times that the humans are the problem a little bit. Well, you know, we got a million taglines and, and the one that we use pretty much daily is what makes great dogs are educated humans. That's what changes the game. If we spend that. more time educating humans than we do training dogs. It just doesn't look good on this sign behind me. Mm -hmm. Sally said, so people training, nobody would know what the hell we do for a living. <laughs> but we're really educating humans. That's what changes dog behavior. We got to understand them the same way. It's just, it's a different communication. Right. Eventually it's like you got dog brain, you got human brain, and then they become the same brain. Yeah. I understand. I do. Okay. And so let's see, there's one more question. Do you have an event yeah. coming up that you'd like to tell us about or anything else you want to tell us about your company? No, absolutely. So along with the Corona stuff that's all going on, by the way, if anybody that's viewing this right now, uh, if you've been affected by this, we're totally sorry. And, uh, uh, got all of our good thoughts and things going out to you guys for anybody that's been directly affected, either yourself or a family member. So uh, we're thinking about you. Absolutely. Um, what we have, uh, just a couple of days ago, we were on WRAL out of Raleigh. Um, and what we're doing, uh, we have this thing that we've been talking about since this happened, and it's the pet-demic, okay? We're in a pandemic, but dogs don't know it, okay? The dog just knows that we're home more, and they get five walks a day and belly rubs, and it's the greatest virus that's ever happened to the dog, okay? Right. <laughs> However, things are going to go back to normal. Things are going to get back the way they were. You have to be proactive and start setting your dog up for separation now, or the pandemic of separation anxiety is going to be rampant. Gotcha. So uh, as far as events go, we have a webinar on Monday evening 
If you go to sallysaidso.com, you can register. It's free to the public. It's called Quarantine and Separation Anxiety. So we're going to discuss separation anxieties from a science standpoint, how it's, where it originated, uh, how it works. And then we're going to end off with practical applications that any dog owner can proactively do at home to start to get on the front side of this before it turns into a real problem. I understand. Okay, that does make a lot of sense. Um, so, all right. Well, I really appreciate you talking with me today, and um, I'll definitely be telling friends about you, and um, should anybody have a need for dog training, and uh, I think our community has a great, a great service in what you're providing, so thank you. Thank you. I would like to close with one thing, if it's okay. Sure. Uh, just a little while ago, you know, as we were talking about the pandemic stuff, obviously, all of our human doctors out there, uh, high five. We appreciate Absolutely. you because if, if we need you, we're glad you're there and, uh, Absolutely. and you're risking your, you know, risking your own to save ours. So, um, but what I think some, some folks I think are getting overlooked are our veterinarians. Okay. Uh, we have a challenge that we've put out on social media. It's called mm -hmm. vets are essential challenge. We have a Facebook page. If you just uh, go on your Facebook, go on the vets are essential. The challenge is very simple. You hold your dog or take a video with your dog mention your veterinarian's name, say the term, say the phrase, my vet is essential. Right. Tag the hospital and the website in the post and challenge a friend. So what we're doing with that is getting everybody um, to, to acknowledge their veterinarian in a public way. Absolutely. They're out there risking their butts too. Their safety is at risk for the health of our pets. So Susie, I'm going to challenge you right now to do the Vets Are Essential Challenge. Absolutely. And I'll tell friends and everything like that. Um, yeah, you got to tag a friend and, and let's get, uh, let's make some noise for our veterinarians. Absolutely. And um, everybody watching, we've got some good vets around here. And mm -hmm. I know when I do a, um, a post on my, on the community group and say, let's see your pets. Oh my goodness. You've never seen so many posts <laughs> in your life. Yep. Who do we like more than our pets? I don't, I don't think anybody, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, first, they don't talk back most of the time. Right. Um, so that's always nice. Um, yeah. But yeah, I will tell you, it's a, you know, it's a, a joy. You know, they're just unconditional love, as you know. And so, yeah, um, yeah I, know, I know for sure we've got some great pets in the area. So thank you for, for doing that challenge, because I think Absolutely. Um, there, there are, you know, Unrelated, I one day was saying, you know, thank you to the first responders and someone commented on my on my post, um, you know, what about the garbage men or what about, and I said, you know what, we haven't, we never, we haven't done anything to thank them. And anyway, if a few people did some appreciation for them. And so just a small act, you know, like that yeah. just gets the word out and, and hopefully um, helps people recognize how important it is. Thank you so much. And absolutely, thank you for the opportunity. Time. Absolutely, and we'll be in touch, thank you. All right, have a good one.